potatoes, the world's most popular root crop. A nutrient powerhouse that's a staple of our summer gardens. Unfortunately, summer is a long way off. And the thought of waiting seven or more months to pull my first batch of baby fingerlings from the garden is downright depressing. Rather than perpetuating this potato predicament, let's take matters into our own hands and move the growing inside. There is a couple of hurdles to overcome when growing potatoes indoors, but nothing we can't handle. So let's get to it. Growing our own baby potatoes indoors shouldn't be too hard, but I've decided to break up the video into three different parts to help keep it as simple as possible. Part one will deal with first creating our potato plants from existing store-bought potatoes, soil preferences, light requirements, and of course our container choices. We're probably gonna build our own, so that part's gonna be real fun. The second video is gonna be planting the new baby potato plants after they've grown for a few weeks, maintenance, watering, and the feeding schedule. Lastly, the third video is gonna discuss hilling our potato plants, which you still have to do indoors, adult plant maintenance, and of course the harvesting. Before we can do anything, we need to make some new baby potato plants, and that's done from existing potatoes. Let's head on inside and I'll show you how. Normally, new potato plants do not come from seed. They actually come from tiny adventitious buds found all around the skin of a potato, known commonly as eyes. These eyes are actually forming stem buds where brand new independent potato plants can sprout from. Whether you use grocery store potatoes, your own harvested potatoes, or specific seed potatoes, the tubers are given a head start and pre-sprouted using a process known as chitting. Before we start that process, if you're using grocery store potatoes like I am here, you must wash them first, as most of them are treated with an anti-sprouting chemical. To break their dormancy, put the potatoes with the majority of their eye buds facing up in a shallow tray or egg carton. This end of the potato is known as the rose end. Now, try not to stack them on top of each other. Single layer is much preferred. I place mine in a dark warm cupboard for about two weeks. Sprouts usually begin to form quite quickly, often several per potato, even these small guys. You can start planting the sprouted eyes right away. However, I prefer to bring the potatoes into the light, little bit cooler temperatures to really green up those sprouts and minimize the planting shock. So, while the potatoes are continuing to sprout and grow, let's discuss our soil. For this project, I'm gonna use the same soil mixture of 50-50 compost and coconut fiber for both stages of the potatoes. That is, the small potato transplants as well as the adult potato plants. I'm going to leave out any soil amendments at this time, opting for a liquid fertilizer at two stages of the growing cycle. Once, right before we transplant our small potatoings, and once again, during the adult growth stage. We'll get into what exactly that liquid fertilizer is during the second part of this video series. With our soil decided, let's look at our lighting. Although potatoes are a root crop, like their close cousins, tomatoes, they actually have quite an extensive shoot and foliage system. And although not as tropical and temperature dependent, you cannot grow potato crops without full spectrum light. This is where the folks at epicleddgrowlight.com have stepped in. They've graciously sent us a Mars Hydro TS1000 LED grow light. Given its size and power, it's gonna be absolutely perfect for this indoor potato project. Check out their link in the description below, but after much research and much thought into this project, I don't think the lighting is something we can skimp on for growing indoor potatoes. 
Now that we have our plants, soil, and light all figured out, let's build our containers. Make no mistake, these guys are gonna take up a lot of space, even fingerling potatoes. The rule of thumb is to plant them 12 inches apart. I think we're gonna get close to that, but we'll make do with what we have. So let's get out of this winter wonderland, get inside and build our potato containers. Potatoes are a unique root crop in that they need reoccurring maintenance throughout the growth cycle in the form of hilling. Hilling potato plants is a task where we continuously add more soil to the base of the plants as they grow. And we do this for two reasons. One, this is where the actual potatoes form and the more soil we provide them, the more potatoes we'll get. Secondly, these developing potatoes must stay underground. Exposure to light will turn the potatoes green, at which point they will actually become toxic and poisonous. So hilling is a must. To do this indoors, I'm gonna have to build a raised bed where it's made out of many layers. As the potatoes grow, more layers of the bed can be added vertically, simulating the hilling technique of an outdoor crop. It's not going to be easy figuring out the drainage as well as keeping all that soil in, but I've got two weeks to do this. And once I figure this part out, it should be smooth sailing from here. Good stuff. This concludes part one of the indoor potato adventure series. And I'm already excited about the project. My next hurdle is to really nail down that indoor planter design and execute it on a real scale. It's okay, we have time. Let's get those potato starts nice and big first. So if you're following along, get those seed potatoes washed and chitted. If the sprouts on them are large enough, pot those potato pieces up into small pots and we'll meet back here in a couple of weeks to discuss that indoor planter bed. It's gonna be a doozy, I know it, but we'll get through it. As well, we'll discuss fertilizing and hilling our potatoes. Yes, even though it's indoors, we're still gonna have to hill these guys if we wanna get the maximum amount of baby potatoes. So, see you in a couple weeks. Also, if any of you are on Facebook, head on over and join our gardening group called Growing Better. The group has grown phenomenally fast, yet it will never lose its sense of community or its welcoming feel. If you're passionate about growing epic organic fruits, herbs and veggies for you and your family, the Growing Better group is a great place to hang out, share, learn and grow. Hey, thanks for watching guys. If you're getting value in this and the other series that I'm doing on YouTube, hit those like, share and subscribe buttons if you'd be so kind and I'll see you in the next video.